so this is where we did the big reveal right um nikita you you and the and the folks you you and the engineering team have been working on the ui for parallel cluster we have we have a cli we have an api but now we have a ui for parallel cluster fully fledged release today exactly um thank you both we are proud to release today the ui the new ui for cluster administrators uh with parallel cluster this will be a powerful tool that will um, allow our customers to design, to monitor, and to manage uh, clusters that they have uh, in their AWS accounts. So this is AWS uh, Parallel Cluster UI. When you log on to the website that you create with CloudFormation, you will see the list of the clusters that you have running your account. Um, you will have an ability, and I will start with that, to design your cluster in just a few clicks. <laughs> so, 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 so literally, we're just going to give the cluster a name. Um, we could be using a pre-existing template that we baked earlier. So this could be like, hey, Matt, give me give me a copy of that template that you used last mm -hmm. week to create a cluster. I want to copy that and modify it. And you can also clone an existing cluster. Right. Which is what it's like. Um, you might be actually copying a production cluster and giving a complete copy of that production cluster to your devs. All right. So uh, if we click next here, we will go to the screen where uh, you can define the region for your cluster, select from a number of operating systems that we support with um, parallel cluster, select if you need a multi-user setup. Um, you can define and design your head node here in just a few drop-down lists. I have selected um, C5 24 extra large instance here. We have um, automatically selected some defaults uh, like the subnet that you might want to be using. SSM se session actually allows you to, um, to connect to your cluster using your browser. You can literally get a command line like a shell through SSM into your cluster, and you don't have to go drilling holes in your firewall to allow port 22 through. Absolutely. And even better than that, you can create a virtual desktop and connect to your cluster visually through DCV. All right. In the bottom here, we have settings for Slurm accounting. You will be able to bring in your own database, um, of course, define username and uh, select a secret for the ARN, um, as well as a bunch of uh, additional settings for Slurm queues that you can see here in the bottom. And Matt, you wrote a really good blog post just recently about Slurm accounting and how to set, how to set it up. That's right. In fact, the screenshots in that uh, in that blog are from a pre-release version of Parallel Cluster UI. So. Moving on to the next screen, we have the file system selection screen here. We're allowed to select from five different file systems, including the uh, most popular ones such as FSx Luster, um, NetApp on top, OpenZFS, as well as of course EFS and EBS you just literally get a high performance Lustre file system um, mounted at your mount point of choice, um, your capacity of choice. This beats procurement. This beats having to figure out how to run Lustre yourself. If you're already using an FSX um, uh, for Lustre file system, you can also just import the file system ID there rather than having parallel cluster provision it for you. But the same goes for, um, for EFS, which is serverless managed um, NFS. So Parallel Cluster can create it for you, or you can use an existing one. Most definitely. It boils down the designing process to just a few very simple options here you can see on the screen. Yeah. And it narrows down the, narrows down the decision making to the decisions rather than the details. This is cool. Moving on to the queues. Um, here we have all the familiar options that you would expect from Parallel Cluster. Uh, you're able to define your queues, select the purchase type. Um, as we have enabled it in the uh, version 3.4 of Parallel Cluster, you can select multiple instance types. Um, here, you can also mix and match which instance types you are selecting for each of the queues. Uh, you can select the size of the queue if, that you want. You can also uh, look at some of the advanced options here <coughs> and configure the scripts that you want to run on this start or on configure the queue. Um, the cool thing about the scripts is that not only you can use the scripts that you bake into the AMI uh, for on your head node, but you could also just input an S3 uh, bucket ARN here and run a script from an external three bucket an, an external S3 bucket. Let's keep going. Matt, Matt. Right. Moving to our last screen, here you can see the familiar uh, YAML file that was generated from all the previous steps um, that we just went through. And so, for all you YAML haters out there. Uh, this is the YAML that defines the cluster. This is sort of the, the, the recipe for the parallel cluster as such. You don't have to type YAML anymore and you don't have to sit there for hours researching what each of the tags, each of the YAML tags uh, that you need to put into your recipe. Um, 
uh, you know, downloading, you know, by, by parsing parallel cluster documentation for hours. This thing replaces uh, all of that work. With so, every cluster that you have um, here in your AWS account, you can also manage it. You can edit the cluster, you can stop the fleet, you can delete it. And of course, you can connect to the cluster using shell or this v session that we enabled for our new um, texture cluster. Um, also, with every cluster you select here, you can see a um, oh, yeah. number of very useful details about the cluster, things like the uh, status of the cluster, the version it's running. Uh, you can see the instances that are currently running the cluster. You can see the storage um, that's available. You can uh, look at the jobs that have been running this cluster. You can actually inspect the queue and see what jobs have recently run and what jobs are sitting in the queue waiting to get executed. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's and really you can good. Do so the stack events, this is this is everything that happens. So under the hood in Palo Cluster, we use cloud formation to provision all of these resources and wire them up together. Um, this is this is a replay of all of those cloud formation events. And then the logs are the actual files on the EC2 instances on the head node, the compute node, et cetera. And you can see that they're all namespaced by the by the IP address of of, of the uh, of the of the instance. Wow. There are so if you really um, that's because we're doing a whole lot of different things, but you can look at them right in the browser here. Right. So if you're really trying to get deep to debug something, this is, wow, this is actually, this is pretty powerful. Um, this isn't part of the AWS console. This is your own console for managing your own parallel clusters that you spin up inside your account. How do you get it to begin with? Yes, exactly. Uh, from the landing page of uh, parallel cluster, you'll be able to, uh, to go to the uh, documentation where Using a AWS managed CFN template, you'll create um, a parallel cluster UI in pretty much one click. All you will need to do is to select the region where you want to create a parallel cluster UI um, and select the email of the initial administrator. Nikita, how much does this thing cost? Almost nothing. Even though it's software that's running your account, um, our estimates are that the parallel cluster UI itself will cost on the order of several cents a month. <laughs> Several cents a month. <laughs> It'll probably fit in the free tier for most people in their first year. That's that's got to be some of the cheapest management software that the HPC community has probably ever seen. Um, Parallel cluster UI is for administrators of the of the clusters. This is a, this is a tool for admins to use to manage all of the you know the menagerie of clusters they may create, manage the users in those clusters, do stuff right. But so so people who get accounts to use the parallel cluster UI, that's a separate body of users from, say, the users here that are referenced here on the cluster properties page, where it says multiple users on the cluster, this is really talking about, say, an active directory. So if you've got a Microsoft Active Directory or an LDAP server where you've defined a body of users that are going to have access to your cluster, that's a separate group of people from the people that are going to be using parallel cluster UI. Absolutely. And the, the list of administrators that will be um, will have access to parallel cluster UI uh, is managed through a Cognito pool, uh, which you can uh, administrate from the cluster page as I showed right. earlier. So Cognito manages, is Cognito is managing the users for parallel cluster UI. And then of course, actual clusters that are built with the UI are getting managed, you know, if you've got to have multiple users on them, they're getting managed by, by something like uh, LDAP or Active Directory. And in most cases, that's exactly the path that most people want to travel because if you're in an enterprise or some sort of, you know, corporation or a university or a research lab, you've probably already got an LDAP or an Active Directory service that you're using for managing your vast numbers of users. And you want to tap into that to let your clusters authenticate against it. If you learned something from this talk, then please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel so you can find out when more videos like this are available. And if there's an area you'd like to see us go deeper into, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. See you next time.